Burn box attack! Hello everybody, and it's Kari Productions here, and I'm back with a new Sonic Boom rant. Now, technically this isn't entirely new. This is basically my Sonic Boom rant, but all the interesting points and all basically the points that I wanted to make, I'm now organizing them better. Because before I was kind of going off, that one lasted 23 minutes, and I know a lot of people didn't watch that. And I've been getting a lot of comments recently, um, basically hating all my points but not really understanding why I mean this way. And now that I've actually gotten more information about the game, I actually feel stronger than ever. So let me just start off by saying that Sonic Boom is complete and total anarchy. It's Sonic Anarchy, people. It literally goes against everything Sonic stands for. And don't worry, I have a lot of points for it, so if you don't believe me, then, you know, let's do this. Okay, so let's go to the redesigns. And we're not going to spend the whole time on the redesigns like I did before. We're just going to briefly go over them. So, number one, they're completely unnecessary. Even with Sega's reasons, they're completely unnecessary. Because Sega's reasons... Once you realize one key factor, all of Sega's reasons just basically mean nothing. So let's go over Sonic. Now, the scarf is to show that he's adventurous. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry, but I don't know when a scarf actually showed that someone's adventurous. But it's supposed to show that the he's ready and raring to go, which doesn't make any sense to me. Honestly, it's a, it's a reference to Nathan Drake, people. It's a reference to the Uncharted series because we just had big, big Red Button Entertainment is from a bunch of people who are on Naughty Dog making these IPs, and then they just jump ship. And, yeah, I don't even understand how they even decide to tell us that, but honestly, that's the real reason. So then let's go to Knuckles. Now, the reason Knuckles has a giant muscular change is to show he's the strong one, which honestly doesn't make any sense, because if he's going to run really fast, then he's not going to be able to run that fast with, A, tiny legs, and B, a gigantic muscular body. That doesn't make any logical sense at all. And honestly, if he if this is supposed to be Knuckles in his strong form, then he better be punching through exact mountains, people. Like, Knuckles, the original Knuckles, was all small and skinny and made sense that he was running fast, and he was punching through boulders like it was nothing. Like, this guy better be punching through, like, gigantic mountains with how big they're making them. Okay, so Tails and Amy, there's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with Tails and Amy. I'm fine with them. If you want to show that Tails is the mechanic, if you want to show that Amy's the girl character, then, you, you know what, fine, go do that. But the one thing that makes all of these changes unnecessary is knowing, is basically the fact that Sonic has an install base, which basically means you don't have to explain to us like, Big, Rubber, B Big Red Button Entertainment does not have to explain to us who the fast character is, who the strong character is, you know, who's the mechanic, who's the girl character. We already know this. You know, avid Sonic fans already know this the entire time, so we don't even need any of this. But, um... They wanted to show us this, I guess, to try to reestablish the series for newer Sonic fans, which honestly is atrocious because the newer Sonic fans are going to be expecting this and not the actual game that Sonic is. So it's kind of like basically, it's kind of screwing the series already. But um, the redesigns are basically what I'm going to dub the Sonic Boom virus because they are infecting our favorite characters. And they even hit Marine. Marine the Raccoon even got a little taste of the redesign, even though it technically isn't confirmed to be Marine. But come on, people. We already know what's going to happen here. So let's just move on to the TV show. And um, number one, the dialogue is atrocious. The TV show's dialogue is widely atrocious. There's nothing helping that. That was just a complete lack of effort on Sega and Big Red Button Entertainment's part. That was just completely, like, that was embarrassing to even watch. That was embarrassing. Now, a lot of people want to say, in comparison to other Sonic TV shows, that um, basically all the dialogues have been terrible, which isn't, which isn't. It's not true. Sonic Saturn was all about its story, and Saturn put effort into Robotnik War. Saturn put effort into their dialogue. They put effort into trying to convey the story. Like, Sonic X even made an attempt with its design and its human integration. It made Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 both integrate into its story. Well, not into its story, but into its um, continuation like greatly it, it basically blended those two games together because those were both set in the human world and they it made it work and that actually shows some effort on the team spark because it's not it's not that easy to try to integrate two games like into the same thing and basically the the dialogue even though there was stupid jokes there wasn't this stupid like the jokes in this one are just this stupid people 
Like, I can't even, like, Sonic X had some bad jokes. Even people still said that Saddam did some bad jokes, but Saddam didn't do bad jokes. Saddam did little kid jokes. Not little, little kid jokes. Saddam did kids jokes because that's what it was designed for. And let's not even talk about AOSTH because AOSTH was supposed to be a kid's show. It was a 90s cartoon in the age of 90s cartoons. It's actually pretty normal when you compare it to other 90s cartoons. Like, literally, it was supposed to be a kid's comedy. That's why it had terrible, you know, jokes and whatever. And it had, like, all these on-the-prompt jokes. And even that wasn't as bad as Sonic Boom with its Knuckles being all about food. And I know Knuckles has been the comic relief before, but come on. This is just, this is just ridiculous. If you're gonna have Knuckles be all about fool, all about food, I'm sorry. He even, okay. I don't know how you got the voice actor to even say the words out of his mouth. Oh no, my cream filling will be crushed. What? What? Okay. Any anyway, let's keep moving on. I'm not even gonna go on about that. And Sonic Underground was all about the music, which it did have some catchy tunes. I wasn't a big fan of Sonic Underground, and I didn't watch the entire series, but I did watch the entire series of the other ones. So um, I'm not really going to comment on Sonic Underground. Um, and I will have you know that I will be reviewing all the episodes of the Sonic Boom series um, when they come out. Uh, and I'm going to be doing it the mysterious Mr. Enter style. Mr. Enter style. Uh, basically, where... Um, I'm going to have a uh, rating system, and I'm going to rate each episode, tell what I like, what I dislike about them. I'm going to have two scores, where it's going to be one score is based on um, Sonic Boom on its own merits, because it's trying to be a new IP, it's trying to be a whole new thing. And another score is going to be Sonic Boom on Sonic merits, which is going to be comparing it to the older series. It's going to be comparing it to the games and the continuity that has been set forth. Because just because you try to make something new doesn't mean we're not going to still con not going to still compare it to the old. Okay, um, let's move on to the game. And this also affects the TV show. There's very bland design. Very bland design. And now let me just get into this. Now, the design of Sonic Boom in the TV show and in the game, it all looks like a gritty next-gen shooter. Like, think about it, people. Think about um, Call of Duty Ghosts. Think about the level in the jungle levels and that. That looks similar to what we see in Sonic Boom. Like, compare Sonic Boom to the other games. Compare Sonic Boom's design to um, Sonic Heroes. Sonic Heroes was vibrant. It was colorful. When you were at Seaside Hill, you really felt like you were on a beach, on a seaside. When you were at Ocean Palace, it really felt like you were at an underwater temple. It really got to the point. It got the essence. You heard the seagulls. It, everything was there. But when you go into Sonic Boom, it just looks like you, you see temples. You see... You see temples, you see these um, jungles, and it doesn't look right. It doesn't look it doesn't look good at all. Even when you compare the new footage that we got from the hub world, it still looks bad. It still looks like a gritty next gen shooter. It actually, it actually honestly um, confirms my suspicions that it looks like a next gen, a, a gritty next gen game than anything else. And the environments aren't colorful at all, and they look like Uncharted. They just look like Uncharted. Like, and I'm gonna, that's the easiest thing to say, because literally, they look like Uncharted people. They look like, it's the same developers, of course it's gonna, it's, of course it's gonna look the same. Uh, and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about a recent IGN article that basically Sonic Team themselves basically said they had troubles adjusting to the new design. So this is quoting from the IGN, uh, this is quoting from the IGN article, um, that they experienced discomfort with the new redesign. And... This is also quoting it. This is an entire lengthy quote. Uh, so, I felt sorry for the guy, Rafe confirmed, some guy at Big Red Button Entertainment. Um, in reference to the moment Sega brought Azuka, as in Takashi Azuka, I'll tell you who he is later. Uh, in reference to Azuka, in reference to the moment that Sega brought Azuka to see what was happening, sometimes he couldn't actually look at the screen. It was too traumatic, too traumatic being Rafe's actual words, not me putting that in there. I didn't put words in his mouth. That's his actual words quoted. It was too traumatic seeing all the crazy stuff we wanted to do. And there we go. Crazy. Not even, I didn't put that in there. That's him. That's quoting him. And that's Big Red Button Entertainment's Bob Raffae. And um, I didn't I didn't want to look up Bob Raffae. I didn't even care. Um, but let's talk about Takashi Azuka. So, Takashi Azuka is the senior game designer of Sonic 3 Sonic Adventure, and Sonic Ge and Generations, among a lot of other games. Like, there's numerous games that he's done, even all the way up to Sonic Lost World. And, honestly, this guy, who was the senior game designer for all these games, he was traumatized looking at what Big Red Button Entertainment was trying to do. And Big Red Button Entertainment has stated that Sonic Boom 
is based on Sonic 2, Sonic Adventure, and Sonic Generations, which honestly is disgrace to all those, and I'll get to those later. But literally, we have the guy who was the game designer who was traumatized at the, to quote, crazy stuff Big Red Butter Entertainment was trying to do. Okay. And honestly, this is more akin, and I actually, I'll show you a, um, this isn't even my words. This is someone else's, another Sonic fan's words. This is a cum to the doomsday coming. And everybody's choosing to neglect doomsday, but we all know what's going to happen. And here's another thing from the IGN article. Though it initially raised eyebrows, Sonic Team com since confirmed the new game will not be released in Japan. And the Japanese Sonic Team are working on titles parallel with the new Western developers. So, basically, the Japan Sonic team already knows this thing's going to be terrible. They don't have any faith, people. Sega as a corporation, not just Sega of America, Sega as an entire corporation, a worldwide corporation, does not trust Sonic Boom completely. And for good measure, they do not want a giant risk. And if this new IP sucks, that basically means the Japanese Sonic team are probably going to come up with something better because they're not making Sonic Boom. They're not even budging with it. They don't care of it. And honestly, they don't need to. If this isn't a big enough reason for you to see why Sonic Boom is a jump, why Sonic Boom is risky, why Sonic Boom should not be attempted, then let's take it from Takashi Azuka, who basically was traumatized, the senior game designer of the games that um, Big Red Butter Entertainment are trying to be inspired by and using an inspiration from, he was traumatized by what they were trying to do, the crazy stuff they were trying to do, and Sega of Japan and Sonic Team of Japan doesn't even care about Sonic Boom. Okay, so let's get let's go back into the game. So let's talk about the open world aspect because I know I kept saying that um, the open world aspect wasn't going to work, and I kept saying that was my opinion. I meant to say predictions. That was actually what I was supposed to say. But honestly, the open world aspect presents a lot of new challenges that s must be done right. Because when Sega tries to go into an open world, you know, an open world type thing, they have to get all the elements that make an open world game good right. If they don't get it right, then we automatically have some problems here. Okay, so let's go on to some new details. These are some new details that came out um, after I made the first Sonic Boom rant. So um, the gamepad is supposed to be used for a map and upgrades, and that actually has some, some potential. I'm not going to hate on that. That actually can be done right. And the... Um, it's supposed to be used for currency and upgrades. That's what the map in the upgrade system is supposed to be used for. And honestly, the currency better be rings. If it's not rings, then Sonic Boom is dead to me. And I'm being completely serious. Sonic Boom is dead to me if, if the currency is not rings, which we already know it is because we already saw rings. But um, And the game is said to be organically challenging. Challenge is not from how tough the enemies progress. It's basically the challenge from skill in combat and the um, challenge from finding secrets opposed to tougher enemies. And, um, honestly, that has, I, I honestly have no idea. I predict it's going to be terrible, but we'll see. It, it can, it can be done right. I'm guessing it can be done right. But, um, we don't really know for sure. We have to wait until we see how Sonic Boom does with that. Um, so let's go. All levels are completely connected by story and locations. Yeah, right. I gotta see this. I gotta see this story connect all these locations and stuff. While some games like Sonic Adventure and um, Sonic Adventure 2 have been great with this, other games like Sonic Generations, even though Sonic Generations was a masterpiece of game design, other games really weren't that good with trying to integrate the games. And honestly, with Sonic Boom's completely, just complete anarchy of the Sonic series, I gotta see this. I gotta see this. Okay, and here's another thing. Um, you constantly use two ch characters normally. Uh, when you operate through the game, you use two characters, which means we're going to have to deal with bad Sonic AI. Honestly, if you, if you uh, the only Sonic game to have good AI, the only Sonic games, I should say, has to be Sonic 2 and 3. Those are the only games that actually had some good AI for Tails. Um, every other Sonic game had some terrible AI when they had to try to do two characters at once. And honestly, I'm... I. I, I predict this is going to suck. I predict this is going to suck right now. And you're going to have to have four characters in boss fights. So I'm assuming you're going to be able to change through the characters because why, why the heck not. And you're also going to have four in the hub worlds. Um, and I don't know how the functionality is going to work. Hopefully it works better than what I think it is. But um, you got you to gotta have that right. 
Uh, now, there's going to be required character points to proceed. Basically meaning that the game's going to stop you and there's going to be a blockade and you're going to have to change characters in order to get through. This is standard for any game that has multiple characters because if they didn't do this, then you can just do the entire game as one character. But honestly, it's up to Big Red Button Entertainment and Sonic Boom to see how annoying that's going to be. Um, and the game is supposed to be character driven. It's supposed to have focus on characters and abilities. And prediction, the story is going to suck. I'm going to predict it right now. The story is going to completely suck. Because there's going to be a whole bunch of things that Sonic Boom's got to do. And with the dialogue sucking this bad, I doubt Sonic Boom's actual story is going to be able to pull any weight. And Big Red Button Entertainment has said there's definitely going to be more Sonic characters coming. And the Sonic Boom virus will spread. There's going to be more redesign. They already got Marine. And honestly, my response to this is don't you dare. Don't you freaking dare. But it's already going to happen. Um... As I said earlier, inspirations can be taken from Sonic 2, Sonic Adventure, and Sonic Generations. It's a disgrace to all of them, and the milestones they set. You know why? What, what, what does Sonic 2, Sonic Adventure, and Sonic Generations have in common, people? They're all platformers. Now, you can say that this does take inspiration, and obviously it does take inspiration from Sonic Adventure's adventure fields, but that was just a precursor to get you to the actual game, and to actually have the story have a setting. Not the actual game, and I gotta see how they do this before I really make an accurate comment, but I'm gonna predict it's gonna suck, and I'm gonna predict that they really are gonna just shun the earlier Sonic series, um, and basically, some people have suggested that this is supposed to be a new Sonic for news fans, and, um... Honestly, this is basically suggesting that Sega is shunning the older fans and that the new fans won't have an idea of what Sonic is. They're going to expect the Scarf Sonic. They're going to expect the new Sonic. They're going to expect adventure games other than, you know, platforming games, what Sonic actually is. They're not going to expect what Sonic really is. They're going to expect this new Sonic, which is going to cause them to make more spin-offs of this, which I really don't want. But um, they won't really know what Sonic is. Uh, let's, so, in conclusion, Sonic Boom is anarchy. It goes against everything Sonic stands for. It, it just goes against everything. Like, it changes the characters we know and love. It changes their personalities. Like, if it was just like Sonic Riders, where it just changed their physical appearance slightly to show that um, it was a different series, I would have been fine with that. If it was literally the exact same characters, but all they did was put on sports tape, I would have been fine. But they decided, Big Red Button Entertainment decided to go over and beyond on this. Okay, it completely disregards the platforming roots, and honestly, it makes a mockery out of what Sonic was before. It makes it conform to the next-gen oddities and standards and not independence like Sonic games were. Sonic games were independent to next gen. When everybody was clamming for Sonic to be a first person shooter, did they do it? No, obviously. Because they had they knew what they had and they did it right. And honestly, Sonic Boom is another one of Sega's experiments. And we all know what happens with Sega experiments with another genre. We get the Sonic Storybook series, you know. We get the Sonic Storybook series, you know, where they tried to blend platforming with non-stop running or platforming with sword fighting or platforming with it, it honestly doesn't care. And we also get Sonic Chronicles, which was an RPG, which, honestly, I didn't think that was bad, but it really made you jump through some hoops for this RPG roots. And a lot of this stuff didn't make sense, and a lot of the, and a lot of the logic in the story didn't make sense. And I'm sorry, but when you have Green Hill Zone, an iconic stage, and you're making a reference to it, and you literally put the music as a little tiny, non-even 16-bit rendition of, I don't know, what the drunk what the drunk audio designer came in on his late day to work, I lose respect for that. And honestly, I don't understand how Big Red Button Entertainment is just going to come in and change the entire Sonic game. You know, they're changing the entire series, people. And I don't know why everybody is being so happy about that. It doesn't make any sense. Because, you know, they're coming in, like, Big Red Button Entertainment hasn't even done a complete game with their official team yet. This is, like, this is the first game Big Red Butter Entertainment is taking on because they were formerly, well, some of them were formerly Naughty Dog. So I don't understand how you're just letting them walk right in and say, hey, here's the Sonic series, let's go. And I don't understand how that's supposed to be good because they're just walking in and changing everything and everybody's just fond of that, which is more reason for us to be on our toes. And honestly, this is exactly like Saddam's Robotnik War. It's exactly like Saddam's Robotnik War because now we see environments that basically... Lush environments, people, it's looking like Robotropolis out there. And 
it's just like that. Like, we had a great thing going. Like, we had Sonic Generations, which set the bar really high. Then we had Sonic Lost World, which lowered the bar a bit. But we still had Sonic Lost World. And it was still kind of good as a Sonic game. Kind of good. But still, we had this, we had this good thing going on. And instead of doing something better with it, and, you know, maybe getting back up to Sonic Generation standards and maybe even higher, Big Red Button Entertainment decides to infiltrate our glorious Mobius... And just takes it all down. And honestly, I don't understand how people are being happy about this. I actually need I actually need you people that are, you know, happy about this happening to explain to me why. Because there's much more reasons for us to be on guard than for us to be going with this. And hopefully, and honestly, hopefully for me, I I hope Sonic I hope Sonic Boom will not get any more seasons than planned. It's already getting 52 episodes, but I hope it won't get a lick more because the series is not pushing its own weight. It's not basically making me want to watch it. And I know the game and the TV show is still in development, but you can't fix a terrible concept. You can, no matter how great the leap is, you can't fix the bad jumping point. Let me just end this by saying that there, I'm not trying to hate on the game. I'm not trying to go out and hate on the game because I haven't played it yet. It could be the best game I ever even played, but I'm just trying to say that I would like the game to be good, but there's a lot of challenges that Sega and Big Red Button Entertainment has to overcome. There's a lot of challenges they have to overcome, and they have not proved that they can even handle any of this. But you know what? If it faces the challenges, if it actually does something good with it, fine. If it doesn't, then I already told you so. But... Sonic Boom is complete anarchy. It goes against everything the Sonic series stand for, and that's basically it. Okay, if you basically disagree, which I know a lot of people will, comment below or go to Gaming Thoughts and Opinion and comment there. And that's all I wanted to say, and that was the life of Gamer. Even trying to fight Shadow. Oh, oh, especially after fighting Shadow. Did you see that? Like, I have to say, I didn't like the fact that Shadow knew. That he kind of had just like a spider sense about it, even though like he really had like no information otherwise. But like, I mean, like 